helping people cope with and overcome life's challenges. This is Life Transformations with Michael Hart, Canadian Certified Counselor and Award-Winning Psychotherapist. Welcome to the Life Transformation Show, where we bring you thought-provoking discussions on a variety of topics related to personal growth, spirituality, and well-being. Well, of course, this is not Michael Hart you're listening to. This is your co-host, Denise Hart. And in today's show, Michael will be exploring the topic of the dangers of consulting psychics and mediums through both biblical illustrations and psychological information. Our goal in this episode is to provide you with valuable information and insights that will help you make informed decisions when seeking guidance and counsel. So join us as we explore the dangers of consulting psychics and gain a deeper understanding of this important topic. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, Denise. That was a very good introduction and so good to have you here with me today. For those of you who may be wondering, Denise is my better half, my wonderful wife, and it is so good to have her on the air today. She's the first voice you hear when you call Elim Counseling Services. And today she is with me in the studio. So good to be here with you, Denise. And I guess you have some interesting questions for me today. Oh, definitely, Michael. Well, regular listeners will know that you most often have a biblical text or story to illustrate the topic or points you are making. This is actually my favorite aspect of the show, to see that the Bible is applicable even in discussing psychological subjects. Well, what is the biblical story that you will be using for today's show? Well, the story I'll be using today is the story about King Saul, the prophet, when he consulted a medium, a witch, to gain insight about a future battle. You see, King Saul was desperate for guidance, and he turned to a woman known as the Witch of Endor. She was a practitioner of divination and claimed to have the ability to summon the dead. So Saul disguised himself and went to her, seeking the advice of the prophet Samuel, who had passed on. And in that meeting with the witch of Endor, the witch called forth uh, the spirit of Samuel, and Saul spoke with Samuel. Samuel delivered a message of impending doom, foretelling that Saul and his sons would die in battle the following day. So the prophecy did not turn out to be as as what King Saul was expecting. It was actually a prophet of doom. So you can just imagine that this encounter left Saul troubled, shaken, as he returned to his camp where he prepared for the battle to come. So this is a, is a biblical story of someone, like a king, who, who uh, approached a witch to gain information about the future. And this story is found in 1 Samuel chapter 28. Oh, Michael, some of our listeners may be scratching their heads over this choice of topic and wondering why, as a psychotherapist, you felt it was necessary to cover the topic of consulting mediums. That's a very good question, Denise. And as I thought about this topic, I know it would be a little strange for some of our listeners, but I think as we As we explore this topic, and as I read the biblical story, I see a lot of psychological uh, context or psychological information in the text in 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 15. And I'll just read that verse from 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 the biblical narrative. And it reads as follows. Saul speaking, I am terribly troubled. The Philistines are fighting against me. And God has turned away from me. He does not answer me anymore, not by the prophets nor by dreams. So I have called on you to tell me what I should do. So we have there the verse started by saying, Saul was terribly troubled. And that's a psychological state. 
and many people who turn to psychics and mediums and other such practitioners are doing so out of desperation. People are usually in a state of desperation similar to King Saul, but for different reasons. So, for example, they may want to know, should they pursue a romantic interest? They may want to know if they're going to be getting that promotion that they so desperately need. Or they may be longing, they may be belonging to, to speak to a deceased loved one and they're seeing the occult as a way of reconnecting with their loved one. Or it may simply be that they want to know if their loved one is okay in the afterlife, a deceased loved one is okay in the afterlife. So in, in most of the cases where people consult psychics and mediums, that consultation is triggered by anxiety, it's con is triggered by fear, it's triggered by grief, it's triggered by doubt, and sometimes even by anger. People sometimes consult psychic and witches because they, they want to get back or pay back someone for evil that was done to them. So I think if you think about all these emotions that he said I have talked about, such as fear, anger, grief, doubt, you will see that it, these are all uh, important aspects that we work with with clients when we are dealing with their emotions. And so I think it's because I, I see all of these emotions why I think this is a very suitable uh, topic for us to cover. But as we go through this show, I'm going to be covering other reasons as well. But I think this is a good basis for which to for which to, to start as we approach this topic. Uh, totally makes sense. And let's uh, continue with the biblical narrative. Because King Saul was a Jew and would have known God's prohibitions against consulting the occult. As there are several warnings against doing so in the Old Testament. So what are the biblical warnings against consulting psychics and similar practitioners? You're, you're right, Denise. There are so many warnings in the, in the Bible against consulting witchcraft. And I'll, I'll just choose a few of them. We don't have time to go in all of the different narratives that are there. But Leviticus 20, verse 6 to 7, for example, says, And the person who turns to mediums and familiar spirits to prostitute himself with them, I will set my face against that person and cut him off from his people. Consecrate yourself, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. We have also another reference in Isaiah 8, 19, where it says, And when they say to you, Seek those who are mediums and wizards who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? And then we have another reference in Isaiah 47, 13, that says, You are wearied by the multitude of your counsel. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you from what shall come upon you. So these are all warnings that we see in scriptures that it makes it very clear that the Bible is against is is against the practice of consulting uh, psychics and the mediums. Uh, sure. And uh, my next question. So King Saul, he obviously was a leader and wanted to get guidance from the deceased prophet Samuel over 3,000 years ago. That's a long time. So let's see if you can help us with something more current. Is there any modern day example of leaders who have sought wisdom from psychics or similar means? Yes, we have a few examples of modern day leaders who have done so. And one of the, the ones that come to mind immediately is Ronald Reagan. While serving as governor of California, Ronald Way Reagan and his wife Nancy were known to consult with an astrologer named Joan Quigley. And Quigley uh, claimed to be able to give them advice as to how they should schedule their events and even advice as to how they could make uh, correct political decisions. And then we have also the story of, of 
Hillary Clinton, who consulted with a spiritual, what she called a spiritual advisor. And the White House was very, was very adamant that this person was not a, a psychic and it was not a science that she was, uh, performing, uh, in, 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 in the White House. And so with Hillary Clinton, what ended up happening is that she, uh, actually, a claim to to have spoken to the deceased Elena Roosevelt, and uh, in these consultations that she had with Elena Roosevelt, who, who who was deceased, she claimed to be able to 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 have a conversation to her and to get guidance from from uh, the deceased uh, Elena Roosevelt, and so uh, the, the 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 White House spokesperson. In standing up for Clinton says, quote, these were people who were helping her laugh, helping her think. The first lady, this, the spokesman said, these were not seances. And so you have this person saying, no, this is not, this is not a consultation with the dead. These were just a practice where she was speaking with Elena and Elena was helping her to laugh and, you know, they were having a wonderful time. So I don't know what you call that if, if this is not a consultation with someone who is dead. And then they went on to say, uh, the, to, to be fair to the, the White House spokesperson, they said to describe it as a consultation with psychic is to try to put it in the wrong frame. We have to draw strength from where ever we can in order to make it from day to day. So this is the, the best the White House spoke person could come up with where they're saying, don't call it a consultation like, you know, she's consulting with someone from the dead. She's just trying to draw strength from the deceased Elena Roosevelt. And so to me, that, that sounds like a rose by any other name is still Arose. So even though this spoke person then he's saying that this is not what's happening, you may think it, 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 it's, it's a science that they're 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 performing, but it's not. She's just speaking with Elena Roosevelt. They're having a wonderful time. They're they're laughing. They're talking to each other, and and uh, she's seeking guidance from whatever source she can get it. So to me, this boils down to the same the same thing. Michael will be right back. You have been listening to the Live Transformation Show where award-winning psychotherapist Michael Hart of Elim Counseling Services has been speaking on a very interesting topic, the dangers of consulting psychics and mediums. You can find out more about us at elimcounselingministry.com or by calling 1-877-204-2914 where you can also make a donation to this Christ-centered ministry. Your donations help us to stay on the air and to provide subsidized counseling to those who can't afford it. So I often wonder how King Saul felt going into battle that day, knowing that the prediction was that he was going to be killed. Maybe he would be more nervous than usual and more prone to mistakes. Could uh, the predictions of the Witch of Endor be a self-fulfilling prophecy? And I also have a second part to that question. Of is this Does self-fulfilling prophecy play out in psychic predictions today? That's a very good question, Dennis. Let me deal with the first part first. So you talk about uh, King Saul, and I think that's a very good observation. And that is something I've wondered as well, that, you know, when you go to a psychic and you hear something like that, you know, you go to this, you, you went to the Witch of Endor, and the Witch of Endor say, by the way, King Saul, you're going to be killed today. And not only are you going to be killed in this battle, but your son is also going to be killed. And then just imagine now, Dennis, King Saul is going forward and he's putting on his armor, he's taking out his sword and he's going to he's going to fight in this battle knowing that he's going to be killed. There could be an element of self-fulfilling 
prophecy in that because if you are going out to battle with the spirit that you're going to be killed with the kind of feeling the notion that you're going to be killed in battle you may have this sense of futility why do i have to even try as hard as i should nothing i do is going to matter i am going to end up being killed anyway and i'm going to my son is going to die on the same day as well. So there could be an element of, of self-fulfilling prophecy, but we should also note that it is important for us to note that this prophecy was not as a result of the witch's power, but rather the power of God who allowed the spirit of Samuel to appear to King Saul. So in, in this, in this particular uh, example, God is actually uh, speaking, allowing uh, Samuel to appear at this consultation, not because the witch has the power to call Samuel's spirit from the dead, but because God himself is trying to teach Samuel a lesson that he has turned against him. And the Samuel, the spirit of Samuel, is speaking to Saul. So, it, it, it yes, it could be, there could be an element of self fulfilling prophecy is what I I'm saying, but I guess the bigger point is that no, it wasn't anything to do with the witch and what the witch said, what the witch of Endor said. It's more about God pronouncing judgment and and on King Saul and allowing Samuel, the prophet's spirit, to speak to him at the point of his disobedience. And the second part of your question, Denise, had to do with examples of self-fulfilling prophecies, prophecy today. I think one example of self-fulfilling prophecy is that if someone goes to a psychic and the psychic says that you are going to lose your job today, that person might go into the office in a dejected mood. And as they go into the office with a dejected mood, they are more prone to make mistakes. And similar, if the if the if the another example of that might be, if someone says that you're going to meet the love of your life very soon, this person might be more uh, open to, to to relationships. They might be more looking to meet someone. And so they're more friendly. And as a result of that friendliness, they end up in a relationship and say, Oh, wow, the psychic, uh, knows, you know, the word came through. And, and a negative aspect of it could be if, you know, psychics have made predictions about people dying at a certain age. And it has actually happened because people become so stressed leading up to that age that sometimes they may have a heart attack on the day. Or, and, and as a result of that, or they might be driving and they have an accident accident because their mind is just so focused on the fact that they were going to die that day. So th those are a few examples, Denise, of uh, present day examples of self-fulfilling prophecies. Very good example, Michael. So next question. Michael, this story of Saul and the witch of Endor is one of the most difficult to understand in the entire Bible. On the surface, it seems to be implying that consulting witches could reveal important truths. It also raises the question if the spirit of deceased loved ones can be called back from the afterlife to give us advice. How do biblical scholars and theologians view this incident? Well, for example, St. Thomas of Aquinas uh, says that the, the fact that Saul, Samuel appears to Saul after his death is evidence of the reality of the afterlife and the possibility of communicating between the living and the dead. And this shouldn't come as a surprise to us because we have an example of that in the in the New Testament where where Jesus uh, showed that the, the death is not the end. He actually came back to life and he spoke with the disciples and he said, I am with you always to the end of the earth. So, so uh, St. Thomas of Aquinas look at the story of that way and saying that the afterlife is real and it shows that death is not the end. But John Calvin takes a, a different approach. John Cal According to John Calvin, the story of Saul and the witch of Endor is a demonstration of God's sovereignty and his ability to use even sinful 
actions to bring about his will. Calvin says God allowed Saul to consult the witch in order to bring about his own will and to show that he controlled all things, even the actions of evil people. Wow, very interesting. So, many people may be thinking, what is so bad if you're receiving the truth through a psychic or similar means? The truth is the truth from whichever source it comes. <laughs> why do you think it is potentially harmful? And why does God strongly warn against such practices? Well, I think we need to challenge that notion that the truth from whatever source is the same, because I think that there are certain uh, dangers in approaching uh psychics because sometimes the truth might be the truth but it's it's what comes along with it and there's a there's a saying that i've heard some years ago where it, it says you know the the devil will use a, a, a ocean of truth to hide a drop of lie and sometimes it's not just the fact that that one thing that they're telling you is truth it's the context and what comes along with it so here are some dangers of consulting uh, mediums and psychic. One danger is fraud and deceptions. Mediums may, may have supernatural powers, but in, in, may claim to have supernatural power, but a lot of these mediums are, are frauds who are using various techniques to manipulate and control the minds of their, their clients. They often use, uh, a technique that is called cold reading. And in cold reading, the psychic will typically ask a series of open-ended questions or make statements that could apply to almost anyone. And so they might make statements like, you have suffered loss in your life, haven't you? And the person said yes, and they start crying. And then they would do it. They would guess the next step. They would say, this loss has to do with a loved one isn't it? And then the person may say yes, and then they say, tell me about the loved one, and the person start talking about their son who had passed away, and then they make other guesses, and they seem to be revealing, a, you know, a very deep and hidden things. But in fact, it's just a technique that anyone can do. And then I guess the second uh, point is uh, false hope. Consulting psychics and mediums can give false hope. So, for example, let's say a, a person goes to a psychic and asks if they will ever find true love. Instead of uh, the psychic encouraging the person to take an active role in his or her life or to, to improve improve their, their, their self-esteem and social skills so that they may become more equipped to have a successful relationship, the psychic may say something like, you're going to meet your soulmate, your soulmate will appear to you. And this person, instead of taking personal steps for self-improvement, go about life thinking that this right person, this soulmate is just going to turn up for them while they're in this state of dysfunctional living. So it gives this kind of false hope. And what about people who receive incorrect information from psychics? You know, how, does that, how does that affect them? Yes, I think that's, that, that's what I call emotional harm, Denise. And there's an example of that. There's this popular psychic by the name of Sylvia Brown, uh, and she appeared on many television shows and wrote several books. And she was later turned, proven to be a, a fraud because she inaccurately predicted that many missing children of her clients were dead. And only for several years later, some of these children turn up alive. So can you imagine the, the anguish of these parents who were told that their children had died by the psychic and go into time of mourning and grief only to know that this prediction that the psychic has made was not correct. So this is an example of, uh, of how psychics can bring about uh, emotional harm to others. 
I can't imagine how those parents would feel, Michael. Honestly. Very, very sad situation indeed. For sure. And so tell us now about how some psychic may be taking financial advantages of their clients. Yeah, so I've seen things like people who will come to me for spiritual guidance and they will say that, you know, they have been to psychics and the psychic will tell them something like, the house that you have just bought is haunted. And in order for you to, in order for me to prevent the spirit from acting up in that house, you need to pay me like $400 every month just to make sure that that spirit doesn't start acting up. And now let me say that in, in some cases, there has been no acting up of spirit in the home, but the psychic can see things before it happens. So, <laughs> so, so, so the psychic is, is telling the client that, look, you know, you have just bought this home and I see that there is a spirit in that place. And in order for me to keep that spirit quiet, you have to write me this check monthly for $400. And this person, in because they are so anxious, a lot of people who go to psychic, as I said earlier, it's because they have psychological issues. They're anxious and they're worried. And so this person will start paying four hundred dollars every month to the to the psychic. But actually, there is no spirit in the house. It's just a psychic way of telling them uh, of trying to keeping a, a financial stream coming into their their pocket. And then you 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 have uh, things like. Uh, emotional manipulation where where psychics will will keep the person emotionally hooked so that they have to keep coming back again and again and again and the person never gets to a place where they feel that in their life they can operate without the psychic doing something to keep them safe to ward off spirit or to or to you know uh to 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 feel that they can actually stand on their own. So there's also a, a lack of, a loss of personal agency. So consulting mediums can lead individuals to keep relying on the mediums rather than to take action themselves to address their problems. And so I think this is this is a big problem because a lot of people who go to psychic, they just keep going back again and again and again because they've they have come to rely on the psychic. And I was, I'm quickly one of time just like to mention one last thing, and that is spiritual harm. Consulting mediums may lead to spiritual harm because you're dealing in the realm of, uh, of, of demons and, and, and evil spirits. And so this person might think that they're, they're doing it just, just for financial gain. But when you go to psychic, you're open up, opening up yourself to another kind of spiritual realm and it's it's not all fun and games like some people may think it's just a fun thing to go to psychic some people do it out of fun as well but you're actually dealing delving in the spiritual realm that can expose you to very harmful spirits Thank you, Michael. That was very interesting. And thank you, Dennis, for being with us today. We have quickly come to the end of today's show and we have to wrap, wrap up here for today. So I want to thank you for being with us on this episode of the Live Transformation Show. If you like this show, please, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a comment on our channel to let us know what you think about this show. I want to remind you that we are on the air every Monday morning at 9.30. So be sure to listen again next week when we'll have another interesting show lined up for you and so we want to thank you for listening and you remind you that you can get in contact with us by through our website elimcounselingministry.com elim is spelled e-l-i-m counseling with two l's ministry.com until next time this is your host michael hart of elim counseling services and your co-host denise hart praying that god would bless you in all your relationships and and to keep you sound in mind and pure in heart.